First Kings chapter 21, and we'll pick up in verse 14. Then they said, sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stone and is dead. So it's been accomplished what she wrote. And it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Naboth was dead, stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money, for Naboth is now is not alive but dead. Again, it's supposed to go into the family. We looked at that last night. And it came to pass when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab arose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession. We looked at that last night. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. That's where the capital is. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth. God still says it's Naboth. Whether he is going down to possess it. You know, he's on his way there, but that's Naboth's vineyard. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed? And we're going to stop right there for a moment because we got three things to look at. Let's look at, uh, first of all, chapter 21, verse number 7. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Does thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let thy heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of David the Jezreelite. And she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal, and sent letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city, dwelling with Naboth. And the letters that she wrote that we studied last night was, hey, proclaim a fast, put the guy on high, and then get two men of Belial to come up and false witness, which is against the law, to lie about Naboth, which is against the law, and then say he blasphemed God and the king, and then take him out and stone him. And from 5 down to 15, verse, you don't see anything that Ahab's involved in any of this plot. He's off the scene. He's told to go get something to eat. Bobby going to get something to eat. Jezebel sits at the desk or whatever they sat at. And she writes this letter and seals it and gets it off. And Naboth is killed. And when God sends Elijah, he sends him with the word, Has thou killed? And without other scriptures and studying the scriptures, you would say, no, he didn't. We're going to look at, yes, he did. We're going to look at a few scriptures here about you don't have to do the physical killing. You can think about it. So the first place, 2 Samuel eleven fourteen, 14. And this is very important. Because one of the things I teach... One of the things I want people to know, Christians and lost people, is we're going to be judged for a lot of things we don't realize what we're going to be judged for. You say, what are you talking about? Our thoughts. 2 Samuel 11, verse 14. We don't have to... Jesus said in Matthew 5, 20, Whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after... <coughs> excuse me. Lust after in his heart. He's not in the bedroom. He's not naked. They're not naked. There's been no action in his heart that's already committed adultery with him. Now, you'll get preachers get up there. Yeah, if you know, you think about it and, and pornography, which it's adultery, which it is. Well, so is thinking about killing somebody. And what child has not sat in this room after being punished? Oh, I wish they would die. I wish my parents would die. I wish somebody would kill them. I wish my boss would drop dead. And do you realize when somebody says, go to hell? There's only one way to go to hell. You got to die first. So verse 14 in 2 Samuel 11. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter. Oh, oh, oh. That's the first time that letter shows up in the Bible. 
letters is the first time that Jezebel sends out of Naboth. That's the first the t first two time a letter and letters show up in the Bible. Someone's going to die. Isn't that interesting? To Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And we're not going to read the letter. It's the thing is, you put Uriah in the most hottest battle you can find. And then when you put him up there in the front of the battle to fight, you guys turn around and leave him and let him be killed. That's the orders. So now let's look at 12, chapter 12, verse 9, Second Samuel. As what we just read right now, David did not physically kill Uriah. Ahab did not physically kill Naboth. So chapter 12, verse 9. And this is the word of the Lord through Nathan. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. And has taken his wife to be thy wife, and has slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. The children of Ammon killed Uriah in battle. This is a wartime battle. And God said, like we're reading now in Kings, because you wrote that letter, because it was in your attention and in your heart to have Uriah dead. It's your fault, along with the children of Ammon. But that was a battle. And when people say thou shalt not kill, you got to realize when you're in a battle, you're in a war that has been uh, set forth by two countries, if not three or four countries. If the leaders of nations say we're going to battle and you are put forth into a battle, that's not murder. You're to obey the government. Uriah is obeying the king. There's a war. The orders are get up there and fight while everybody else turns around. Now, the children of Ammon are not going to be charged with wrong because it's a war. The charge of murder goes to David by his actions. 2 Samuel 3.27. 3.27. Now, we are not in a war in 3.27. There is no proclamation of a war right now. In 327, 2 Samuel, and when Abner was returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly and smote him there under the fifth rib. And he died for the blood of, for the blood of Asenel, his brother. Now, Asenel died in battle. He's chasing Abner. Abner says, listen, go get somebody else. Will you go get another war prize? Leave me alone. Asael says, no, chased him. He took that, that, in the time of war, took that spear and killed Asenel. Joab is angry. The war is over. He kills Asenel. All right? He's a murderer. But that's not it. Look at verse 30, same chapter. A couple verses down. And Joab and Ab Abisai, his brother, so there are three sons. Joab, Asahel, and Abishai. So Joab and Asahel, I mean, excuse, and Joab and Asenai, his brother slew Abner because he had slain their brother Asahel and Gibeon in the battle. Where do you see in verse 27 As Abishai? He's not there. Why did God say, Abishai, you killed Abner? Because it was in his thoughts. It was in his heart. And you killed my brother. And I want you dead. We are guilty when we think and we dream and we settle in our minds and we daydream, we night dream, we have visions that we want somebody dead. We are murderers ourselves. As much if you're, if a man is to look at a woman in a magazine, on a computer, or anywhere and say, oh baby, I want that woman. As much as you say, oh man, I want that boss dead. I want my parents dead for doing it. I want somebody dead. Abishai was charged, even though he did not lay a hand on Abner. David was charged, though he did not lay a hand on Uriah. 
Ahab is charged, though he had nothing to do with Naboth. It was all Jezebel. So there's those charges. Let's look at Mark 15, 12. Let's bring in the New Testament. Mark 15, 12. We'll go to two verses here, then we'll go to the other avenue. Mark 15, 12. Now, I know Jesus Christ laid his life down for us. You, I know you can't kill God. All right? When Jesus Christ gave up the ghost, that was him giving up his life for our sins, for our life. There was no murder at all. Really? Uh, Mark 15, verse 12. And Pilate answered, said, on, uh, said again unto them, What will ye then that I should do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. Pilate said unto him, What? Why? What evil has he done? And they cried out the more, Exceedingly, Crucify him. All right, they're just talking. They're just screaming. They're just yelling. Acts chapter 10, 39. They're just saying a bunch of words. You got to be careful in the crowd you're hanging out. Because what they could be screaming could be your trouble. This is Peter witnessing to Cornelius 10, 39. And we are witnesses of all the things which he did. This is Jesus, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. Whom they slew and hanged on a tree. D did the Jews do that? No. The Roman government nailed him to that cross. Jesus Christ gave up his own life. You can't kill God. Peter, and it's found throughout the book of, of Acts. And Paul writes, by saying crucify him, they're guilty. Who killed Jesus? The Jews. The Romans and Jesus himself. Now the Romans may have nailed him. The Jews may have yelled crucify him. But still that charge is there. You think Peter's a liar? I don't think so. We got to realize if we get into a group of people. And we start shouting something that we don't even know what we're saying. That's bad company. And we'll be held accountable. I wonder how many of those people said crucify them. They had no idea what they were even doing. They're just going with the flow. Bad company. Now, number two, we got the husband. Ahab is the husband of Jezebel. Ephesians 5.23. Now, this is one that many men don't want to think about. We got two verses here to look at. Ephesians 5.23. Ephesians 5.23 says, the husband, For the husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church, he is the savior of the body. So there is a hierarchy in a family. God has set forth that man, the husband, the father, but the husband here. He's the ruler of the house. Jezebel is taken over. Ahab come, has come to be a puppet in that family. He is charged. And let's see one other place. 1 Corinthians 14.35. This is one I like. 1 Corinthians 14.35. As far as the charge that God's going to put upon a husband. And husbands will stand account for their wives. Either judgment. Saved or lost. And in chapter 14, 1 Corinthians 35. And if they will learn anything, this is the wives, let them ask their husbands at home. Now, we're not going to go to controversy, finish that verse. Right there, just enough. A man that is a husband of a wife cannot expect that preacher, that pastor, that Sunday school teacher to take over for her study and her learning of God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the Bible. If she has a question, the Bible says in the New Testament to the Corinthian church, honey, you go to your husband and say, hey, I got a question. 
Her reliance on things spiritual is not the pastor, it's not the preacher, it's the husband. So when we come back to 1 Kings 21, when God says to the husband, Has thou killed? You did not take charge of your wife. Number three. She wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal. He was um, disregarding. He was not responsible for his kingly functions. That seal, like I say, would have been his ring or a necklace. That did not belong out in the open for her to grab it. He did not take responsibility of the kingdom of Israel by letting his wife seal this, this letter. And the, listen, the people of, of the town of Jezreel, I don't think they're going to be charged with ever killing Naboth because, hey, this is the king's seal. We got to obey the king. It's the seal. And it's the orders to be Romans 13, though how wrong it could be to hire two men to come up and lie about Naboth, the king said to do it. They are obeying the government. Now, as far as Peter and James and John, as far as, you know, to murder somebody, they would have right to say, hey, we're not going to do that. But they obeyed the orders of the king. And this whole mess is by... Ahab could not take control of his family, could not take control of his wife. And there's a God in the land of Cana, where Jezebel came from, called Anna, A-N-A-T-H. She's the wife of, and it could be, you know, of the gods, but Baal, you know where Baals come from. That's the God of Jezebel. Anna, the wife it is said they found in history and archaeology that she is the appeaser of her husband. And she will fight his battles for him. And I found that quite interesting reading that today. That here is what Jezebel is doing. She's acting the wife of the God and say, I'll take care of the duties for you, hon. You just go relax and, and you know do whatever you're going to do. I'll get that property for you. She's stepping in the realm of her gods. So, hast thou killed? We need to look at 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. We need to realize we've got to look to God and say, God, what is my thought like? How bad are my thoughts? Because my thoughts are going to be judged as much as my actions. We sit there and tell, oh, you know, people who are sitting in prison, how bad they are. How bad is our thoughts? What if God could play our thoughts out right now that are not under the blood? Since that we have not confessed. If he, were, if he could go before a judge and say, this is what this man and this woman has been thinking about. Man, we'd be in jail too. And we've got to confess those sins because we're just as guilty. We've all got bad thoughts. Thou hast killed, or hast thou killed, and also taken possession. He's right there in the vineyard. The guy said, hey, go down that vineyard. He's looking all around. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, thus saith the Lord. Now, because the prophecy. In the place where dogs licked the blood of Naboth. So when they stone them, the dogs are savages. They go and they eat the body, they eat the bones, and they drink the blood. His body was put without burial. That was a no-no to Jews. They stoned the body and left it. Shall dogs lick thy blood, thy blood, Ahab, your blood? Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. It looks like the, the body may be just around the corner. Now remember, we are not told verses 14, 15, and 16. Hey, Naboth is dead. We're not told he was told how he died. That's not recorded. I mean, I mean as far as Ahab being told. Jezebel comes up, hey, he's dead. Go get the property. This may be the first time he's hearing it. What, what do you mean he, the dogs are looking at his body? And Ahab said to Elijah... Has thou found me, O my enemy? Now look where he stands. 
Here's a prophet of God. And he's coming to, to, to Ahab. He said, you're my enemy. And if Elijah is the enemy, so is God. And he answered, I have found thee because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. So Proverbs says, I don't know, if Pro Proverbs has already been written, but I don't know if it's available yet. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, beholding the evil and the good. It's not Santa Claus making a list. It's God making a list. God has watched you, Ahab, and you are wicked. You are evil. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee. You're going to reap what you sow. And will take away thy prosperity and will cut off from Ahab him that pisses against the wall, the males. The strength of Israel. Everyone that's a male in your family, dead. And him that is shut up, he's homeward bound, he can't get out, maybe in prison, wherever it is, he can't get out. Health, whatever it can be. And left in Israel. And will make thy house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. That's been destroyed. Because of the golden calves. And like, <coughs> excuse me, and like the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah. His house has been destroyed. Because of wickedness to God. For the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger. Look at that. That's a God that people want the loving God. God gets angry. That's not preached on many Sunday mornings in many of the churches in the world. That there is an angry God. I've been told that there's been billboards that God loves everything or everyone, whatever it is. That's wrong. That's an angry God. And made Israel to sin. Oh, you better watch out. Be better than a millstone be about your head than offend one of these little ones. I mean, if he's got the adults doing it, he's got the children doing it too. And of Jezebel, let's see if anything comes good out of this one. Follow Jezebel. Also spank the Lord, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. <laughs> She's going to be dog food. She's going to be dog food. Him that dieth of Ahab in the city, the dog shall eat. And him that dieth in the field, they're out in the fields, out in the, out in the woods. No buildings. Shall the fowls of the air eat? That would be scavenger birds. That would be, um, um, can't think of it now. Vultures, kind. Eagles. No burial. Listen, the Jews, I mean, if you didn't have a burial, that's one of the, the, the most wicked things you can do, not to have a burial. And then you would be dog and bird poop. Get it? If they're going to eat those bodies, what do they do with the food? And God's familiar expression that shall be dung upon the ground. But there was none like unto Ahab. Which did sell himself. Listen, he sold himself out. He didn't do it out of ignorance. He didn't do it. Oh, I didn't know. Man, he gave himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord. God sees it all. God just doesn't see our good. He sees our bad. And when you read, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, behold, the evil and the good, the evil is first, because we are prone more to do evil than to do good. Whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. And look at that. He just, he just think about, you know, the, the picture of the witch, she's got her brew and she's stirring it. It's all got all kinds of scum in it. And that's what she's doing. She stirred her husband. She stirred Israel. She stirred the kingdom to do wickedness. That's one more place we've seen Jezebel, and there's been no good spoken of her so far. And he did very abominably. That's the first and only time that word shows up. That word only shows up for Ahab. 
in following idols. God is angry with idols. Now, why can't these people who have idols and, and images and statues and why can't people get the fact is God is angry with it? According to all the things, as did the Amorites, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel, the, the land, the, the land that God said, hey, don't take their images, don't take their gods, break down their altars, get rid of them, kill them. Well, honey cakes brought it back, brought it in. She was a worshiper of Baal. That guy's wicked, very wicked. Now, it's amazing, Grace, that we keep on going and we have more of this chapter to study. And it came to pass, when Ahab heard those words, all right, he's listening to Elijah from God, that he rent his clothes, tore his clothes. That's a sign in the Old Testament. And you know what? I am. Oh. Anger. Anger. And put sackcloth upon his flesh. That's a sign of humbleness. That's a sign. Of, you know, I am the next best thing to this miserable, rotten clothing. This is what the people of Nineveh did at the preaching of Jonah. Ahab, as wicked as he is, as God just told him, you're wicked, you're violent. Ahab says, I repent. I am sorry. Lord, forgive me. And fasted. I ain't eating. I am not touching nothing. Get that food away from me. I am vile in the eyes of God. And laid in sackcloth and went softly. Man, he said, the next step I'm making, God's going to kill me. Those dogs are going to. He's believing the report of, El of Elijah. And that next step I can die and those dogs are going to eat me. He's walking and praying to God. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, so between 27 and 28, Elijah's left. Maybe. Or maybe Elijah's still standing there. I don't think so. I think 27 is a process of time. And the Lord calls upon Elijah, you get back over there. Seest thou how Ahab has humbled his, humbleth? That's the first time that word shows up. Humbleth. Well, we got abominably, first time, only time in the Bible, and we got the first time humbling himself also shows up. This man has truly repented. This man has truly gotten right. And it is whole. You may think the most vilest, wicked person you can ever find on this planet. If that man would repent and get right and turn to God and trust in what God has said. Has humbled himself before me. Because he humbles himself before me, God, before me, I will not bring the evil in his days. Oh, look at that. But, but, in his son's days will I bring the evil. So there's been a delay, but not put it off to the end. God's already foreseen his son. Ahab's son. Going to do wicked. All right, Ahab, you've gotten right. You humbled yourself. All right, I'm going to spare you. But in your son, I know what your son's going to do. I already know what's going to happen. It's not going to get better. You got better. I will bring evil upon his house. And we close that chapter at a good point. We still got more Ahab's life left. But remarkable how wicked this guy is. And really, the Bible says he's just wicked. But the true wickedness is coming from Jezebel. He says, yes, yes, yes. I'll do anything you want, but still wickedness. And it's kind of weird because he is charged with murder and there is no penalty. There is no offering for murder in the Old Testament. But we'll pick up more on Ahab before he dies.